J James, James, what are you doing? I th sometimes something happens. Like what? Uh, magic things, uh, ray guns that grow things. Seeing our future selves, infinity stones. <laughs> James, not every intro has to be special effects and humor. Sometimes we actually have to just review the car. Oh, okay. What? I was, I was enjoying doing those things. Well, enough's enough, James. Besides, where we're going, we don't need intros. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And today we want to answer a question that's plaguing the entire first world. Do you need an M2 competition? Because we loved it. We did. It's very expensive, though. It is very expensive. But this has a six-cylinder engine at the front. It has an M Sport exhaust at the back. And it has a little M badge on the side. So is an M240 enough? Because looking at the price difference of over $10,000 US, this should by all means be an inferior car. From the outside, there's less styling indication of an out-and-out -out sports car. And even under the hood, the power numbers drop proportionally to the price difference. Keep in mind though, we're talking about the understudy to the M2 competition, a car that is absolutely adored by anyone who crosses paths with it. What we mean by that is that we think that this car, even though it's just a sporty two series, has the potential to fill the void that a proper M car could. So today we are going to give it a serious shakedown to see if it's good enough. But before we get started, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so that you see our videos as soon as they come out. Also, if you want to see what we're filming before it goes live on YouTube, follow us on Instagram at The Throttle House. <laughs> yes! Oh my God. Oh, this car is genuinely fast. Okay, the M240i. This is a fantastic little car. This has the B58 engine, which if you've been paying attention, is the same engine, pretty much, that's going to come in the new Supra. Pumping out 335 horsepower, 369 pound-feet of torque. This thing used to have more torque than the M2, but since the M2 competitions come along, this actually has a bit less, quite a bit less than that S55 engine, actually. But honestly, other than a lower red line, this is a absolutely brilliant power plant. The torque is immediate. The power is ruthless. It is a fantastic engine. And it is all you need. And thanks to X-Drive, there really isn't much in it between this and the M2 competition for straight line acceleration. I think this car sounds great. Really, really lovely tone. There's something about an inline six. It's there. So I'm in Sport Plus right now, shifting manually, honestly, in gear. Watch, 4,000 foot down. There's just a, a, there's no like delay, it's just a wave of torque that comes in. And it sounds really good. The exhaust on this isn't as like blah, blah, blah as the M2 competition, but it is genuinely fantastic sounding in the cabin and outside. Okay, so this has the eight speed transmission, not like the seven speed M double clutch in the M2. But I'm telling you now, the way it's tuned, this feels like an extension of my brain. The shifts are so smooth. And yes, there is a brief moment of sadness when you realize that we haven't got the manual today. But once you get over that, you realize that this thing, it's so, so good. And in manual mode, the shifts are, are very, very satisfying. Would I have chosen a manual if I was to be able to choose between these two cars? Yes. But honestly, once you really get it out here, these shifts are so fast. Second, up, it's just crisp and incredibly satisfying to drive. And then when you put it in automatic comfort mode, it's completely out of your okay. way. And when you go into manual mode in this car, BMW lets you take full, oh, the pops are so good. BMW lets you take full control and you can hit the rev limiter. It won't auto upshift for you. So you've got to do the work. All right, in these corners. Oof. This car wants to play. It wants to play. 
So you can feel the nimbleness of this car, the size of it. This is where it differs from things like the 4 Series and especially the 8 Series that I've been driving this week. It is, oh, it's so small and playful. I love it. All right, we're in Sport Plus right now, diving into the corners. You can feel the rear come around so easily. Oh, it's just, this is a supremely balanced vehicle. The steering in this car, I would say, isn't quite as direct as the M2 competition, but it's as near as makes no difference. The nose goes in, we are on not st sticky tires right now, but honestly, it feels very direct. And, and there's a connection from the front end to the rear end that is just genuinely fantastic. Like my inputs on the steering create motion in the whole car. It creates yaw in the corner and just all the time. It feels fine, all the time. So when BMW started with electric steering, there was a bit of deadness on center. This thing is, it's, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better. There's nothing I can complain about in this steering. This is one of the best balanced vehicles, even with the X-Drive, that I have driven in a long time, other than the M2 competition. Brilliant chassis. Standard with the M240 is the adaptive M suspension. So I'm driving in this in sport mode at the moment, and on the road, it is, it is too firm. But it's, it's so communicative, so if you want that, you, you've got it. In comfort mode, it is on the cusp of being a bit too firm, but still, excellent this is not a gt cruiser car you will always feel like you're in a sporty car when driving this now james and i consider ourselves the type that for pure fun would always choose rear wheel drive however we both found that the x drive in this to elicit those same sensations you get from a purely rear wheel drive car okay so the engine in this car goes this way so it's predominantly rear wheel drive but thanks to x drive it sends power to the front when needed and that means you have everything you need to drive this car all year round, which I can't say for the M2 competition, which is real wheel drive only. And honestly, the X-Drive in this doesn't really seem to matter. It sends power to the rear and it rotates on the throttle. And then in the winter time, you go anywhere. So Thomas has been living with this car for a few days and I know that he's been sitting on Auto Trader trying to find one for himself. And I think in that investigation, we've discovered that the M2 holds its value much better than the M240. But we were looking and you can get an M235i, which has the N55 engine, for like 28,000 Canadian. It's gonna have a few kilometers on it, but just like, as a used prospect, this thing is amazing. I paid more than that for my Miata, and now I'm upset. Okay, now the one thing the M2 has over this, obviously, is the M Sport differential. And yes, that genuinely does make a difference. It, it connects the rear in a way that you can actually feel. That said, two things. Out here, you don't notice it. Push the power around the corners a little bit, the rear goes around, you smile. Also, for a couple grand, you can go to a dealership and have them install that M differential in this car with a warranty. So, I mean, if you factor that into the price, and honestly, go aftermarket anyway, spend less and get a Torsen diff, and you'll just be smiling all day long. I cruised here comfortably, the seats are comfortable, the driving position is, is, is great, and then on the back road, you can just sing this car through the corners. It floats. It's such a fun car to drive even in X-Drive format. Well, <laughs> it's amazing. I know. On, on the road, what more can you want? Yeah, like the M2 has more if you're on a track and you're doing power slides and stuff. Yeah. And with the new M engine, it sounds a little bit better. But like, honestly, on, on the road, do you genuinely need any more than this? I can't. It doesn't look any different inside. No, it really. doesn't. It's basically the same interior. The exterior, you lose a few things. The front doesn't have as aggressive of styling. Yeah, right? we, well, we lose the kidney grill. You lose the kidney grill with the uh, the connected front, which looks very cool in the M2 comp. Yeah. And these, this doesn't have the M wing mirrors as well. No, but they're, they still are cool. They still they do look cool. They're very good. But yeah. it doesn't have like the hook, the horn wing the, mirror that the M2 comp no, does. No, those, which are really, is, those are cool. Those are very good. But, but honestly, honestly, these wheels are the winter setup, by the way. Yes. Not <laughs> the normal wheels. Ignore the wheels. Ignore them. Yes. But the proportions are absolutely, I'll overlay a picture right now, like just the size of it, yeah. it feels absolutely fantastic. Inside, inside you can feel how, how You can small, feel the yeah. wheelbase when you're driving it. Although, comment on the color. Yes. 
you can't get this in Long Beach Blue, and you can get the M2 Comp in Long Beach Blue. And I think that yes. is the best blue on the road. It's true, but for the price difference, you'd wrap it literally any color you want. No, I like this color. It is a I good like color. color. Yeah. Interior? Yes. Let's do it. All right. Okay. This is simple and nice and clean. Yes, but I would say it's also borderline dated. Okay, yeah, like, you, you mean like this section or this, yeah, like... Yeah, the, the gauge cluster, actually, I don't mind, it's classic. It's yeah. this section that looks so good on the new 3 Series. Okay. And I'm looking forward to that coming to the 2 That's Series. That's true, but everything else in the new 3 Series, and the new X5, and the new X7, and the M850, which we have right now, the video's coming out next week, is too much. There's too much going on, it's too complex, there it's is. too complicated. Materials in here are not amazing. This, this pattern is less offensive than the 3 Series, although yes. this blue line is very nice. That is good, yep. Yeah, but this it's just this is a bit dated. No, there's something to be said about how clean this is. Yeah. Although, does this glow orange? Ooh. I didn't know that was there. That is out of place modern. So, so <laughs> yeah, for right. those that are at home, I'm not actually uh, pressing on these. I'm You're just, just grazing. Yeah. You're grazing them. Grazing, yes. They stole this technology from the sheep. It's graze technology. Oh my God. Not to be confused with Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> Where do you come up with this stuff? Okay, but anyway, old iDrive, which I like better than new iDrive, because this is simple. Blocks of information, it's all here, and you just click and it... I'm, I'm going to leave the benefit of the doubt there. Apple CarPlay. This is a touchscreen if you want it to be, right? Yeah. It's all there. But you can't control it with this. You can control with that, and in a comfortable position. Steering wheel's very nice. It is. doesn't yes. seem dated, this bit. Although the stitching in the, on the uh, 3 Series is really nice in the center bit, but who cares? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is a heated steering wheel as well. It does, yeah. yeah. yeah on the button, on the side. And yeah. paddle shifters. The paddle shifters are very nice and clean. They feel expensive, actually. They they are like a They feel aluminum. purposeful. They do. Like they, a lot of cars, like the C-Class and the 3 Series. Yeah, Even just, the 3 Series, actually. They just add them it on. It just kind of happens to be there. These yeah. feel like they're meant to be there. Exactly. Right? They're not as cool as the M2 ones that are really long, but like they're still very good. And I, by the way, I know we talked about this already. I love this gauge cluster. It is so classically BMW. It is clean. It is so easy to read. But I, I'm curious to see what a modernized version of this would look like without sacrificing too much. Like, well, we kind of got that already with like what was in the five series with like the two little oh, like, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. But now they but now they've changed it to this this weird digital thing that I'm not a fan of at all. Oh. And I think that's just it's nice. It's nice and warm. It is a good. Yeah, it is a good heat <laughs> steering. I've lived in this cabin for like three days and I adore. Like these seats are comfortable. Cruising in this car is so easy. And then like at the flick of a button, you're wailing on a back road. I love this car. Totally. I absolutely. Love it. It's not too often that we both agree this much on something, but both of us loved the M240. And James wasn't joking, I am actually shopping for one of these. But even though this X-Drive automatic was tons of fun, I think I'm looking for a rear-wheel drive manual version. So after spending lots of time in both this and the new M2 competition, we have found ourselves at a crossroads. On one hand, the M2 is the more special, sought-after model, and the one that goes above and beyond for a driving experience. But on the other hand, the M240i is pretty much as fast and will put as big of a smile on your face for much less money. So with that in mind, it looks like the M2 is the one that you want, but perhaps the M240 is the one that you need. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we go. Hold on, I'm happy now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we, are, here we, are. we are actual. That's some good lemonade. I was enjoying doing those things. Well, Sorry, no. <laughs> 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 <laughs>